May I introduce Adrian? Adrian will showcase one of the products we've been working on for the last few um, years. Yes, and before I let you in on some of the work we're doing here at the Innovation Lab, I would like to give you a little bit more context. So Christian alluded already to the challenges, the set of challenges people living with a skin condition, especially longer-term chronic skin conditions, are facing in their everyday lives. One of them, an underlying one, is that those skin diseases such as psoriasis or eczema, they're not very well understood. So that means there are known triggers, but the impact of those is highly individualistic. So when you're looking at your skin every day and you're wondering, is there something that makes it better or worse? Is there something that influences whether there's a flare up or flare down? You have two challenges. Firstly, it's not always easy to see how the skin gradually changes. And secondly, the human brain is simply not set up to keep track and interpret correctly cause and effect. Humans are terrible at that. When I, um, as a teenager, was living the joys of, of moderate to severe acne, um, I had very strong suspicions about the food, um, about, I was very convinced that the treatments I got the topical creams were highly inefficient, but I lacked the tools to convince my, my doctor. The second doctor I switched to gave me, in the end, the treatment with quite severe side effects, so I kept wondering, what if I could have avoided that with something else? And if you just try to remember what was the weather last Wednesday, what food did you eat, it's impossible to remember. So the question is, what if we could make it easier for people to keep track of their skin condition? and maybe even to help them with automatic feedback, whether it's getting better or worse, maybe even predict. That was a question, unfortunately not myself, I would like to claim, but a group of very talented people here at the Innovation Lab posed and started the Imagine project. And it went through the innovation process through three phases of discovery, incubation, and acceleration here at the Innovation Lab. And what's so interesting about this is that it's very tough to get the project to survive. Uh, many ideas have been not even started. A good dozen of projects that were started were killed in this funnel at some point. But everything contributes to the bigger knowledge base that we're building together. So probably everyone working at the Leo Innovation Lab has in some way or another touched on this project so far. And what's super important is that from the very start, it's been heavily involving people, call them patients, but they're just people and doctors all along the way. So what we initially launched is, call it a seemingly simple tracking app. Seemingly because when you work with something that has to touch upon the lives of consumers, you have to keep it simple. You can hide all the complexity, but it needs to remain simple. So what this app does is it empowers thousands of people to track their conditions, stay on top of it, be able to use computer vision technology to take photos that more easily align so it's easier to compare and to compare them to, say, for example, the level of discomfort over time. Does an app like this help people? We think so, it already does, and that's what we keep hearing from patients that we talk to, people who use the app and who send us their feedback. And this goes broadly about around skin diseases that, that remain for a longer term. But from the very start, we've had a, a bigger plan, and just before I, I will talk about that, let me ask you a question. What does, uh, do these four images have in common? Does anyone have a, have a guess? I, I won't uh, thrill you for too long, but these uh, four, it represents four health issues, four diseases. Um, but each and every one of them has been shown in the last one to two years that artificial intelligence can be as accurate or even above the mean performance of a panel of experts, whether that's for cancerous melanoma, um, strokes, diabetic retinopathy in the eye, or a nail fungal infection. So with all these advances in technology, the question is, can we use this to diagnose even more of the over 2,000 skin diseases that exist in the world? Can we use it to give automatic progression feedback and to predict the outcome of a treatment or a lifestyle change. So we got to work on this mission, on this bigger mission, and 
because we, from the start, planned this in, we have the Imagine app built as a bigger platform. That means people who use the app, they have been contributing with their de-identified data to make this, these bigger goals happen and contribute to the research around these diseases. And with the, with the data we have gathered, and I'm actually one of them, I'm contributing. Um, when I take photos of my daughter's eczema, she's about 20 months old, I, I contribute to this research, but I also feel a little bit more in control of doing something and trying to figure out, does this new moisturizer with 50% fat, uh, does it work better than with 30% in the summer? The other way around. So um, with this, we started with a specific focus on psoriasis. And here we can see that actually with our AI based on deep learning, we have a, a performance that is as accurate very close to, to those of highly specialized and professional dermatologists with an accuracy of, of 91%, and uh, in that range also a uh, uh, very well-balanced sensitivity and specificity means when you actually correctly identify the disease when it's there and when you correctly say it's not there when it's not there. We also started recently moving into dermatitis, uh, another chronic disease group, which sometimes can resemble psoriasis very much. And here we get to around 86% accuracy, but it's still a little bit imbalanced. So, so you lose a little bit of the accuracy if you want to make sure you are as good as identifying the correct ones as the non-correct ones. We have just started this journey uh, to, to really democratize access to accurate diagnosis, to empower, on the one hand, people living with the skin conditions, on the other hand, augmenting the physicians, the doctors, who are still going to be a key role in this patient physician, in this healthcare system overall. And in the end, our big, big hope um, to predict, to prevent outcome of, of diseases. Thank you very much. Super cool. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. We have, I think, uh, just a couple minutes for, for some questions, if there, if there are any. Yes, please. I think we have a microphone also. Oh, yes. I'm just curious about skin cancer and um, how the options are in using um, AI to diagnosing skin cancer. Yes, uh, so it's maybe a cliffhanger, but <laughs> in, in one of the talks later, uh, we will actually touch upon that. It's, it's something we haven't explored ourselves, but there's other companies that we're also affiliated with. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, it was a great presentation. Uh, what was the investment level and time uh, that you used uh, from start till execution? Uh, because it does sound complicated in a way. So, so all ideas start very much with just one person maybe working a few hours a week on this idea to getting it to a stage where it can be presented to a broader forum and people can downvote or upvote it, um, then engaging maybe one or two other people, a developer, a designer, taking it to, to the people out there where the product could help. So it, it gradually evolves. Um, right now, there's a lot of people working on, on, on different aspects of this project. Um, as we see, the potential is, is really there. So we also want to make sure we bring it out to, to the market so that people can actually benefit from it. So there is, there is also significant investment going into this now. It's uh, coming. What do you think the business model will be? Yes, very good question, of course. So we, we don't believe that we should charge patients for, for this directly. But in most healthcare systems, there are very clear uh, incentives or benefits if the waiting time could be reduced, if the quality of the referrals through better, more accurate diagnosis or better uh, take on the evolution of the disease could be provided. And that's why you then typically have the, the healthcare systems or insurance companies to, to have a very clear uh, motivation to, to make this happen. If I uh, look at the previous presentation also, saying that 60% of the patient will have a diagnosis just uh, remote. So that means you believe it's for 60% of the patient, it's not necessary to have any physical test of bacteria or 
uh, and, uh, allergic uh, reaction, etc. Other physical tests, it can be only done by uh, image analysis to have the diagnostic for 60% of the patients. We believe that, that we can get very far, uh, if, if, even if you look at biopsies of the skin or, or tests, they might not be even as reliable for, for some of the skin diseases. So um, we think that, that, that we can, maybe you need to add a few more additional questions to the, to the person, right? Uh, how long has this been present? Do you have any other symptoms? And then triangulate to, to that. There's one more question and then I guess we should move on. Uh, thank you, Adrian. Does your uh, application, does the Ima Imagine application um, work with scalp psoriasis? Yeah, very, very good question. So one, one challenge, of course, is uh, it depends where you have the psoriasis. Um, we are aware that when it's on the back, it might be difficult to take a photo yourself. Um, we have seen people using, using mirrors or asking others for help. Um, as long as, as you can kind of get to the same position of the phone, and of course we're trying to, to look at how can we even help with more automatic feedback, whether you're again finding the right uh, spot or what can we do to automatically then, then merge those photos together. So we, we, are, we are aware of that and, and trying to work on this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.